it's thought that around 140 million years ago, before the continents drifted apart from one another, one crustacean left the sea and made a life for itself on land. This crustacean is a woodlouse, which is more closely related to crabs and lobsters than they are to millipedes. Adapting to life on land began with a battle against the air, which has the power to dehydrate and suffocate a woodlouse. The air literally draws the water out of their porous body. They're not like insects, which evolved a waxy skin to trap the water in. Even their breathing puts them at risk because wood lice still have gills. And they're also quite tricky to pick up as well. They still have gills, which you can see on their underside of their body as little white patches. Less primitive species, like this one, has a tube connecting its gills to the air, kind of like a trachea. This reduces the amount of surface area that the water can be lost from. But unlike insects, they can't close their trachea to stop the water from escaping. You see, how gills work is you have this thin film of water which acts like a medium for oxygen in the air to transfer into the blood and then carbon dioxide to pass into the water and then back into the air. So a woodlouse has to continuously feed its gills water just to get them to work. But this is just another route for water to escape, slowly dehydrating and ultimately suffocating them unless they find a constant supply of water. But this is what makes wood lice so special. They absorb as much water as they can from the food they eat. They even eat their own feces to make sure that no moisture is left over. But if this isn't enough, then they can suck water up off surfaces, but not through their mouths, rather their bottoms. They have these special structures called uropods, which come together and draw up water by capillary action, the same way that water is drawn up a straw when you put it in a glass of water. All this water that they've managed to find is then sent around a capillary network that keeps its body moist. Even their young are provided with a traveling water world. When the eggs are fertilized, they're stored in a special fluid-filled brood pouch on the underside of the female's belly which means that a woodlouse has found a way to take the water with them wherever they go, even if their bodies aren't designed to keep hold of it. But the real success for the woodlouse is the fact that this is a story of behavioural evolution, compensating for where their body has failed. If I asked you to try and find a woodlouse, you'd instinctively look under a rock or a log because you find them in dark, damp places because this is where they know that they're less likely to lose water because it's colder and more humid. So much so that if you expose them to daylight, they scramble as quickly as possible back into their homes, away from the light into the dark. But this brings us to the most curious thing about these creatures. If it rains, you see them crawling out of their dark, damp homes because too much water can be fatal. It seems that this crustacean has lived for so long on land, it can no longer return to the sea from where it came. So next time you see a woodlouse, try and figure out if it's trying to find water or escape it. Thanks for watching, and for more videos like this, click the link to subscribe.